Hello there, I'm Matt Lees, and I'd like to have a rational conversation about irrational. <laughs> this morning I woke up, just like everyone else, to the very surprising news that Irrational Games had shut its doors. Now those of you who remember the video I made at the start of last year will remember that I'm not the world's biggest fan of Bioshock Infinite. Having said that, this comes as quite a major surprise, but I'm not sure that it's necessarily a bad thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not saying that obviously people losing their jobs is a good thing, and I'm not saying that I wish any harm upon irrational people who work there simply because I didn't like Bioshock Infinite as much as most people did. What I'm saying is that for me, as I said at the time, Bioshock Infinite felt like a very strange compromise between creative vision and the financial realities of the current market. Or to put it in less wanky terms, they wanted to make an interesting story and they had to make a shooty bang shooter. And I don't want to dwell on this for very long because obviously the video I made last year was quite an extensive thought about this, but really I felt like Bioshock Infinite was a bit of a failure in that regard, trying to balance the requirements of what a game for the mass market needs to be like with their individual desires to create a certain type of story and a certain type of experience. It felt very simplified, they'd taken away elements that had made the System Shock and Bioshock games interesting, and yeah, it just felt like there was a lot of compromise in the game. And I suspect that Ken Levine knew that too. Because you know what? I remember seeing all of those interviews with Ken Levine of him talking about how important Elizabeth's character was and how important all of the different things in the game were going to be. I don't remember him having an interview talking about how important it would be that we'd have to shoot loads of men in the face for about eight hours. Because I don't think that the things that were poor about Bioshock Infinite came about because of direct decisions about design. They felt like at every stage they were having to do certain things in order to make a game that would sell enough copies. And really, Irrational's closure says more about the current climate than anything else. Irrational games were one of the poster childs for the idea that you can still create these mass media mainstream experiences and do interesting things. As I said, I don't think it panned out as well as it should have done, but I will not fault the rational on their ideas. It felt like they were trying to juggle too many things, which led to the songbird not playing a major part. People thinking it's a bit racist, all sorts of things. I think that it all boiled down to the same problem of a game trying to juggle too much whilst really having to focus on something that the game perhaps wasn't very interested in doing. And so from a creative perspective, it makes perfect sense for Ken Levine to want to step away from that. Bioshock Infinite felt like a compromise, and I feel like as a creative, he will have realised that. And his desire to step back, form a smaller team, and start beginning on different types of projects, get away from AAA and the budgets and the hell of all that, makes a lot of sense. And it's smart of 2K to allow them to do that within the company. Because what we're really looking at here is a global change across all media. We've got to a point at which the major, major blockbuster products are now very, very careful. You have to only specifically make certain types of things in order to make your money back. And it's got to a point where it's not just about games. We're seeing this in all elements of media, of large creatives deciding to step away from big projects and finding that they actually have to leave the systems that they work for in order to go and create their own things, because large systems are set up in a way that just simply doesn't support smaller, less financially expensive projects. Having said that, Take-Two, the company that owns 2K and Rockstar Games, do take a very different approach to the way that games are funded. From an outside perspective, it appears that for the right products and for the right studios, they effectively give them blank checks, allowing them to keep spending as much money as they need to spend to make the products the products they need to be. In the case of GTA, that prints money. That much is completely assured by now. It just works. And it feels like they tried a similar approach with Bioshock Infinite. It's a Clearly an incredibly expensive piece of work, and even though it's sold very well, it's very difficult from the outside to tell how much of that was actually profit. And with the current AAA games market in the current state it is, 
Just throwing as much money at a project as it needs to get made to be good is sort of something that I really, really like the idea of as a creative, but uh, it's kind of crazy, don't you think? Studios downscaling to skeleton crews to begin projects and prototype and gradually building up again are just a natural part of the way that the industry functions. People talk about layoffs a lot, but a lot of this happens quite regularly behind the scenes, unless of course you have a studio that is able to keep staggering projects to keep everyone in work, which is increasingly difficult. So on the one hand, it's sad that a lot of people have lost their jobs and the studio that then sustained those jobs now doesn't exist, but it's also quite exciting to see Ken Levine back working on a smaller project. I don't always think that the games he produces are as good as they should be, but as with Molyneux when he left Lionhead to go and make 22 cans, I am excited to see what Levine does whilst working as part of a smaller, perhaps more focused team. Well, obviously Molyneux's goddess is, uh, is bollocks. But again, the big takeaway with Irrational Games closing and the thing that makes me sad the most is they seem to be one of the only studios that kind of wanted to believe that it was possible to create different experiences, rich art-driven experiences with clever ideas and interesting ideas while still creating that kind of AAA highly produced product. And as I say, I think Bioshock Infinite in some regards was a failure in terms of trying to balance those two demands. However, the fact that they tried it and the fact that they came so close gave me real hope for the future of the AAA market. Now we see that Irrational are closing its doors and now that we see that the first wave of next generation games all look amazing, don't get me wrong, some really polished, awesome looking stuff, but not a lot of interesting stuff. And for me, the closure of Irrational Games may signal, for the time being, a real hiatus of genuinely interesting and different AAA games. I may not have felt that Irrational achieved what they were aiming to achieve with Bioshock Infinite, but the fact that they were trying to achieve it was incredibly important for the medium. And I think it's incredibly sad to see Irrational go. Having said that, there is a final caveat which is incredibly important to make, and that's that we have to talk about this under the assumption that there was nothing that could be done to save Irrational in its current state. Because if the reality of this situation is just that Ken Levine wanted to go indie and still remain working within the corporation, and if the deal was very much pitched to him as being a replacement for an entire studio of people just so he could start a smaller project but working on a smaller scale, that's really bad. So we're going to have to assume that that isn't the case because if Levine has willingly killed off the jobs for hundreds of people just so he can keep doing his own thing while still getting paid a nice wage for doing so, that's very bad. So all the best to those poor people who didn't make the cut for the final 15. And Ken, all eyes on you, baby. All eyes.